でそこであの循環していく経済というのを考えるときにあの植物の種に着目してみると答えがあるんじゃないかというような話をされていますで植物の種というのはあの植えてそれがまあ、えー、また芽が出てくると、まあ、植えた以上の効果があるしでそれ自体が、えー、土地の,その何ていうんですか多様性を進めていくような感じがあってですねすごくかりますえっとなのでどういうことその植物から発想を得て、まあ、経済活動というのを特にその次の世代子どもたちの世代なんかに進めていくような活動を今されていてで最後の締めくくりとしてはその種を、まあ、みんなで植えていきましょうとそれを育てていきましょうというような感じのメッセージを伝えていました。もしあのもっと個別のご質問とかあればですね、また言われていただければと思いますので、はい、よろしくお願いいたします。Thank you. So, we move on to the second、uh, presentation.、Okay. Feel free, I think it will really help us also.、Right? If you think it's going too fast, just that would be really helpful for us as well.、Right? Thank you. Okay, so、uh, the focus then of the observations and、um, the opportunities that I will be sharing are specifically to do with innovation. In voluntary,、uh, privately held standards for environmental, social, and economic performance that a company can choose to be evaluated against. This is distinct from a government required standard that has to be met. This is a voluntary decision and、uh, that places our work at this intersection between companies that are trying to make profit and also trying to create some kind of positive impact. Uh, within that for profit model. So、uh, that is a sort of、uh, potential tension, but it also is an opportunity for a lot of creative thinking about how we can approach business differently. So the perspective that I bring to this is from within a certification company, the company that actually goes out and provides the certification. But my perspective is sort of like. An outsider within my company because I am constantly evaluating our operations, specifically how we operate internationally、uh, in many different contexts from Malaysia to Japan to Egypt to throughout Europe, India,、uh, throughout the world, different organizations、uh, that we subcontract to. Uh, are the focus of my work, and so how can these organizations with their different models,、uh, how can these organizations with their different resources, different levels of training, different sizes, different、uh, technological infrastructure,、uh, how can they do the work of uh, implementing uh, these standards? And 
myself, since I work for a for-profit company, I'm always looking at how we can do our work more efficiently, how we can improve information flows within our company, how we can bring better ideas forward for how we do our work. So in that sense, even though I'm not myself working for a company that is a certificate holder, <laughs> okay, he said to slow down. <laughs> Thank you, that's what I need. <laughs> Tell me to slow down. Uh, I face similar constraints, which are that we have to meet standards ourselves in order to be credited to operate, to do what we do, and we have to do that within a for-profit context. So um, that would be part of the perspective that I bring and how we can look at uh, certification, how we can look at these, what many people might think of as constraints that companies impose on themselves for how they do business in order to do business better, more sustainably. How we can look at that as uh, not just a restriction, but actually a catalyst for creativity and new problem solving, as well as how we can look at that as an investment in the employees themselves, how it can be an investment in creating a new company culture through certification. <coughs> So I'm not here representing my company actually, and I'm not here representing any scheme. Uh, I'm here uh, to raise questions as a, a stakeholder essentially, who sees the value of certification and believes that it is important to raise certain questions, to interrogate certain questions in order to look forward to the future of certification, what will be the model that works, what will be a way that this can be leveraged to make optimal impact. Uh, so a few questions that will be a focus are, how can market-based certification of environmental and social performance play a role in conservation and resource management, distributing benefits both to companies that are certified, to communities, and potentially, though, this is not as often considered to uh, governments as well uh, and to end consumers. Another question is, how can certification, this voluntary market-based certification, catalyze innovation? How does it rely on innovation? And what further opportunities are available to be realized, to be valued, communicated and invested in, uh, in particular to uh, expand the impacts, to make them more efficient for conservation and communities. And by understanding the value of certification for companies beyond outcomes that can be simply assigned a monetary value, so getting outside of the framework of a cost-benefit analysis that may be more conventional. And thirdly, could certificate holders, could certified companies benefit from thinking of certification as participating in a community of companies, a community that needs to grow, where there is mutual benefit from that growth, thinking of it as an ecosystem, not just as competition? How are we doing on the pace? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so, I see this as relevant um, because certification is a mechanism for objectives that have the utmost importance for facing climate change, uh, for facing the challenges of upholding people's rights, cultures, quality of life for all. Um, and I think that looking at these questions can help us identify how we, how we best uh, put resources toward certification. So with certain successes for this model, this certification model, um, I think when I asked if people had heard of FSC or PESC, people kind of nodded. So uh, the success we could say so far is that uh, in the case of FSC, for example, this is a scheme that has existed now since the early 90s. Uh, it has more visibility. We are seeing a multiplication of the types of environmental and social certifications available in the marketplace. 
Uh, in fact, it can be kind of overwhelming in San Francisco, where I am from, <laughs> because you go into the supermarket and when you look at products, you see so many different claims. And I work in this industry and I don't recognize all of the claims. So if the value of certification is supposed to be a signal, is supposed to be information conveyed to the end con It's good to explain FSC, not everyone knows. Oh, okay. So uh, FSC stands for the Forest uh, Stewardship Council, and it is a stakeholder uh, built and run not-for-profit, non-governmental organization that uh, was established in order to fill the gap that um, we were creating so much destruction, uh, specifically through logging, uh, and that there were not, or there were not perceived to be adequate government regulations to manage that damage. So this was intended to be a way to create incentive to reward companies that uh, practice more responsibly. So certification of forest management practices starts the process, and then everybody who then sells and adds value and passes down a product from that certified forest get certified as well so that when it reaches the end consumer it has been verified that this product, this material, came from this forest that was managed to this standard. And that standard covers occupational health and safety, it covers um, the rights, customary and tenure traditional rights of indigenous communities that rely on those forests. Uh, it, it covers the sort of economic benefits that are created by the forest management practices how those are distributed to uh, employees and to the local communities. Uh, it covers how uh, high value forest areas, uh, how biodiversity is conserved. It covers a number of different principles and criteria and uh, the idea was to promote a higher bar of social and environmental responsibility in the industry. Uh, does that answer the question? <laughs> okay. Um, so, Okay, so now this, this, this has been uh, in practice for some time. Uh, and so it has been in practice long enough that this is no longer just this exciting experiment. Uh, now there are people on both sides who see it as having positive, real benefits, as well as people who see it as uh, disappointing, uh, as having real shortcomings, uh, some people who see it as being watered down and weakened, uh, riddled by conflict of interest, uh, who see this as a, a sort of greenwashing mechanism. Uh, and then you also see on the other side, if you were to look at the literature by some of the major development agencies, uh, if you were to look at uh, actual impact assessments by academics, you would see also some more positive commentaries. So it is mature enough at this point that uh, it is controversial to some extent. And uh, if we're going to ask ourselves this question of why pay for certification, why invest in this model, we are asking that question in a different context than when this first began. Um, so to start with, um, this is a sort of framing of the proposed value of certification and some of the perceived value of certification that may be familiar. This is a somewhat more typical or conventional way of looking at the proposed and perceived value. Um, and I'm not going to list everything, but um, this question is phrased here to basically say, um, it is the perceived value in the marketplace at this point equal to the value that is being proposed? Uh, if it has been around long enough that there should be some kind of proof of concept, then uh, what is the answer to that question? Why pay? Is this a good investment for companies? Okay. Um, so, So why pay? We have to look at this question uh, in the context of the economic and political and cultural conditions of today. 
Um, and what we know is that uh, however many billions of humans that <laughs> Peter was talking about live on this planet who depend on resource extraction and ultimately on resource renewal. Um, so whether it is uh, mining or logging or um, indirect impacts that are also extractive where we deplete soils. Am I going too quickly? <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the problem is not going away. We are going to need to find a way to manage our resources that is sustainable, that meets the needs of future generations. Um, and where are we in terms of certification being a good way to do this? Uh, well, we know that uh, internationally, this is a mechanism